Welcome to Camp Up for Advance, Lesson 18. My name is Sensei Roger. And I'm Paul. And today, we've got an awesome lesson for you. But before, let's get into a disclaimer. Martial arts training may lead to injury, or in rare cases, death. With this knowledge, you assume all responsibility of injury or death from the training the contents of this video. Well, let's get started. We're going to review a technique we call dropping shackle. This is a technique I actually picked up a while back from an old video from Ed Parker. It's kind of like a version of the shackle break technique that's in the Tracy system. I thought this was pretty neat and that's why I shared it in the last series and I want to review it today. It's just a two hand wrist grab from behind. Obviously no one's just going to grab you and hold you like this, right? He's probably pulling you, but what I want to do is kind of grab here and here. Now at this point, I get the chance to step back. If his foot is too much there, I can't do that, right? I might have to come this way, but what if I start leading this way? Well, then I would have to improvise and do something else. But for the training, he's got a hold of me. He starts pulling me a little bit. I'm able to get behind here. I'm going to grab both wrists here. I'm pulling across straight down. Now here's the crazy part about this. If I don't have good posture, you see how I start rocking backwards? All right, let's go over this in the air for a moment. So you're gonna reach up and grab like this. All right, you're gonna step with your right foot as you take your left hand and put it in the hammerlock position. Get yourself a good stance here. Take your arm back like this and then swing it down. Let go of that and then elbow straight down with the right arm. Okay, here we go. So from here, he's got to hold me. I'm stepping across here. See how I'm getting a better stance? I won't come in here. Now I can bump him. Something goes wrong, I'm a little better off. Now I'm elbowing him down. The only thing I don't like about this is if he hangs on to that arm, this really tight, and this doesn't work, and we're fighting this, I'm stuck like this. Now I'm sitting here trying to go in here and try to come back out. That's one thing I don't like about that. Mm -hmm. But that's why we want to look at the techniques and see where can it go wrong. Right. I've had a lot of students, especially the women, they would try it with their husband or their boyfriend, and then they go, it didn't work. And why not? Well, one thing is, they know what you're going to do, or Maybe you don't know the technique. Or maybe it's the wrong technique for the way they grabbed you. Well, the grip's too strong for or some Or maybe people. you're not really hurting them. True. You didn't kick them in the crotch hard enough. <laughs> it's not going to work if they're being funny. That's the idea of that. And none of it's going to work 100%. But I do like this move. Let's go over this again. He's got a hold of me. He's coming around. I come across like this. I'm down. I elbow. See, now he went far enough. I can hit him in the spine. I can hit him in the kidney, I can hit him in the back of the ribs, I can hit him anywhere in those targeted areas from that point. If he didn't go that far, I might be able to hit him in the back of the head, but usually I think they're going to be pretty far gone. And if they're not that far gone, they're probably not that far in for me to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's you, get, really wrong. you get that advantage and you don't have options, you might not know what to do at that point. So, oh, maybe I can't elbow him for whatever. Maybe he's bigger, smaller, starts falling. You need to have something else to, to go to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to crossing hammers. This is the next technique in the Kempo Set 2 Kata that I designed just for you guys. And that's the next one in here. And I remember a few videos ago, I was trying to do it and I butchered it. I'm like, what? I was like, I better practice this a little more. I'm showing you guys it. So that's the thing is I'm trying to be honest with you guys as much, as much as possible. I'm not afraid to look like an idiot because I'm pretty good at doing that at times. <laughs> I'm not afraid of that. I'm used to it. That's my life. I believe when I was in elementary school, they still had the dunce caps. And, uh, <laughs> I should wear that sometimes. I had that. I had to wear that. But I'm not afraid of doing that. But because I do look like an idiot sometimes doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm doing to some degree of level, right? And that's why I don't want to discredit myself by throwing a bunch of mistakes. I was like, okay, if I did that, I'll humble myself and let me make sure I know it. 
And that's what I want to do is show it better, which I have in the last few videos. But let's go back to this crossing hammers here. This is against a left punch. This is a Tracy's karate technique here under that name. So let's throw in a left punch. There's two couple ways I'm going to show this today. They're throwing the punch straight at you here. All right, we're going to do the cross step like this. And when I'm stepping, I'm going to step to about 1 o'clock. I don't want to go like this and way down there. Just kind of step, moving my body as I'm doing an hour block. And this other hand gets up to be prepared. Now I come around into my opponent, back fist. Turn with the chop at the left, see so how my hips turn into like a soft bow. And I turn back, soft bow here as I uppercut. Alright, Paul, come over here please. Paul's going to throw that left punch. I'm going to block it out. Okay, I did it the other way. But throw a punch. Here, I see it coming, I'm crossing. I'm getting out of the way. This is here. I don't want my chin up. I've talked about this over and over. I want to be in here. Step around. Make my back fist the base of the skull if I can. The temple. I'll even hit him in the ear. I don't care. I'm just hitting them, chopping right here. They come up with the uppercut. All right, throw that punch, please. Now I hit, chop, uppercut. Now here's what's nice about this. I can hold him. I can hit him. Even if his arm is here. I can move that, mm -hmm. now I can come in here, shift my body weight, and give him a nice uppercut. So you can use that chop as like a check move to make sure I don't maybe try to swing around. And exactly. Throw, yeah. I mean, it could be a strike mm -hmm. if they're cleared. Right. I can hit the ribs, I can hit down a little lower, a little soft area here, then I can come right in and get that uppercut. But I don't think, I would personally try to go to the immediate protect mode on my exactly. side, knowing you're behind. If I did, I'll just hit you in the air. Right. You feel me hitting the arm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't take you out, but it's still not comfortable if I hit you full contact mm -hmm. right above the elbow or in the bicep or even back of the tricep. There's nerves around there. Mm -hmm. I can hit that, pushing in, right. throw you off balance. I can turn that a little bit and I can hit you here. You're blocking this side still. I can come around, I'll hit the other side. I, I like this move a lot. Yeah. Here's a couple things I discovered with this move. Throw a left punch right at me. Right here, there's no way I would come around with the outward block at that point. Throw the punch. Why wouldn't I do this hand or parry block with this hand? I don't know. It's a reaction maybe. Throw that punch. Now this is where I go, oh, I move my head. Punch at me here. See, one of the quickest ways not to get hit is to move the target. Mm -hmm. You throw the punch again as I'm here, and now I can move. Now I can hit you, hit you, hit you. Okay. Pretty good idea. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Boom. Let's go over this both ways. I'm going to start off with the block and step. This so the hand gets prepared. Don't leave your head up there. Just kind of shrug it in here. Now step, drop that in. Shift your hips, drop that. Shift your hips back again, lift that heel up, uppercut. Then, move the head, shift the hip, block. Be here, boom, now step, and step. Back fist, the chop, the uppercut. Okay, so I'll come over here, please. I want you to punch me. See, I'm here to here. Okay, now you see how it works? Okay, do it again. See, I come around, I can go right here. I don't have to go up here. I can just come in here and strike them. You could go away from the technique. But here's the cool thing is one, two, coming right around. Here's what I like about breaking up the techniques. You got, right now we're working an hour block. We're going from extreme side. Throw the right punch, please. Okay, throw the punch again. Now, maybe I'm here, I can check that out of the way and hit him here. I still got this footwork now. I got the block in I'm working. I'm working strikes. I'm working a nice uppercut. I love an uppercut to the body. Hook punch, uppercut to the body. Mm -hmm. One of the things that really taught me how to throw a decent uppercut is doing these moves like this one. I started getting here. I feel like a lot of times when we're doing moves, if we just do that, it's only arm punches. It's just, it's not that powerful. Mm -hmm. A lot of our tempo moves, if you practice it a certain way, there's no power to it. We're just real flashy. Yeah, it looks great. But where's the power? You gotta really start analyzing. 
your movement, your footwork, everything. And that's what's nice about taking the techniques, going slow, start figuring out, or start hitting a pad. I like to have the students, I show like a pad, I'll have them, I'll hold up a pad and have them come around and just do the back fist part. Walk around back fist, trying to develop the power to that. Or we work the uppercut part. Those are some of the things we do. I just now thought of that. I don't want to go chasing to grab a pad, it's in the other room. Or as I would show you guys what I'm talking about in this video. But since that is in there, I'm not wasting your time by running to get it. But that's something, like hold your hand up for this for a moment. Really Just hold that like this. This is come over here, please. This is what I'm talking about with the pad. I'll hold the pad here, and then I'll just have them come in here and drop it in here. Coming out here, and you just start dropping power in there. And I would want to hit harder with the pad too. Mm -hmm. This way we're not hurting each other's hand. And it's not too bad in here, but eventually it's going to start getting uncomfortable. All right, let's go to the Kempo set two. I got it real quick. Uh, bro. Footwork is one of my weak spots, not knowing, and Roger helped me out today because I have a tendency when you say cross step, I'm like this, catch myself off balance, and he just explained, just take the step like a normal yeah. walking step to one o'clock, and it made a big difference for me. So sometimes we have to work on those small things, if not, I'm off balance and there's no strike power. And I'm glad ridiculous. you said that because that's a common thing that the students do. Or some of, if you move like a cowboy, like Paul, <laughs> like you're about to have a shootout. <laughs> some of you guys watch some of the old cowboy movies, they really were like this too. And that's how some of the students are more stiff than others. I'm going to bring You are, you're like a cowboy. He's strong, man. He's strong, but he's not the most... Agile. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say, your movements aren't always that fluid. They're getting better since the first time we were doing the videos. Right. Because we've been working this stuff. And some people, they go 20 years and still don't look that great. But they, you know what? Go in there and fight with them. They hurt. Paul hurts sometimes. If, we, if I get hit by him, it hurts. I have another older gentleman. He's in his 50s. And when we spar, I don't want him to block. His blocks hurt. <laughs> oh, everything hurts. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the only one that said that. Everyone has said that. And I remember one time, there was this older guy, he's probably retired from doing the martial arts, I haven't seen him in years. But early on in my career, he used to bust my ribs up. He had this reverse punch that would hurt everything. I asked him, how is your reverse punch so tough? He goes, I work on a farm and I punch cattle and right in the rump. He says it doesn't bother them. He's like, if they don't move, I'll just reverse punch them. Because they get okay. stubborn. Cows get stubborn. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people think, oh, they, why are you abusing the cow? No, cows are very tough, he told me. <laughs> he just go, wham! I'm like, okay. And well, I feel it. My body is not nearly as tough as a cow's rump. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. I mean, you have your strength and you have your weakness. If you have a hard time with the movement, start working it. Start going slower with it and start getting the foot. Like I did that video of me doing 250 moves for exercise. Okay, I know the system of Tracy's karate. I know every technique. Am I good at every technique? Absolutely not. All these years I've been doing it, I'm still not good at every technique. I could do it in the air and look good at it if I wanted to, or I could do it sloppy like I did in that one. Because I, that was just an exercise. But this here, if I really wanted to do some of these moves, it's hard for me to do. Drums of Man Shoe, like we did the la that one video, I could do it looking great, but when we come down to it, it's just, I'm having a hard time finding the right punch for that technique to work, the nope. right kick. I could do the move great if I had the right opportunity, but every time we go to actually do it, mm -hmm. it's hard to get that one set up. For me, some of you guys might be like, it's easy. Well, it's an easy move for me to do, but now do it on somebody. That's why I said I'm not good at all the moves. Real quick, what's that statement you say? Learn slow something, what was that? <laughs> what's that called? Slow is fast, fast is slow. There you go. 
you go slow, you will learn faster. If you go fast, you will learn slower. It's by going slow, you will end up picking up nuances. And you'll start picking up the movement better. If you try to go fast, you're going to get sloppy in the beginning, and then you're going to pick up sloppy habits. And that's something I really had to deal with myself. I had to pull that away. Someone told me one time, hurry up and slow down. I didn't know what that meant for years. Then I thought about it. I was moving around all fast, getting nothing done. This is our workplace. It was my first manager. I was like 15 years old. He said, hurry up and slow down. Hurry up and get the job done, but slow down so you can get the job done. I wasn't getting nowhere. All right, let's go to tempo set two. Here we go. I'm going to start over here. I always forget I want to do it in the middle of the room, then I get drawn that way. All right, here we go. Campo set two. We're going to start out. Seven swords. Twist, other side. This guy here. Cross the mountain guy. Cross here. Sweep. We're going to strike. Bang. Out. Bang. Rush, grab, rush, grab. And we come up to here. Okay, now we went to the move to the drums of Manchu. I almost forgot that. Then we come over here. Now I cross step, this is the new part, and we go into crossing hammers. Now we're gonna to go to this corner. So we're going, our aim is here, after we just did the kick, this guy here. We're gonna look over to this back corner. Cross step, so I'm looking at that corner, step back fist, chop, uppercut. Now we're gonna to go to this front corner, right hand outward, cross with the right, step back fist, chop, uppercut. So let's go over this part again. If you want a deeper breakdown, like I said, follow through the other videos and we'll get to there. But after I just finish all that good stuff over here. <laughs> you guys got it. Right, we're going to go over here. Left punch. A shift, cross out, step, the back fist, the chop, the uppercut. I'm going to look up to about one o'clock. Outward as my right foot comes across. Step back fist, Chop, up and cut. And we're almost done. One more move. Then we come out. And that'll be the cut. We'll finish that one next week. Or next lesson, whenever we get to it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you get something out of this. I just want to put something out there for you guys. Spread positivity. There's too much out there of being negative, to dwell on negativity. Put out something positive. Even if it's not perfect, put it out there and be positive. And if, for you YouTubers out there, if you're getting somebody out there that's putting out stuff and they're putting all these comments on you and you can't handle these comments, disable the comments until you can handle it. I know it's a good part of it is when you communicate with other YouTubers. It's good, it's nice, and that's what makes YouTube nice. But also you got lots of good people, then you got some people that are just trolls. But if the trolls bother you, disable it. Okay? Hope you guys get something out of this. Yep. Thanks for watching. Know your own value. Yes. It'll help uh, quell the enemy. You know, if you know you're actually worth something, it's going to help you. Is you are worth something. I was talking to someone not that long ago. They were talking about, I have no reason why I should be living, they told me. They said, I don't see a purpose why I'm living. I said, do me a favor. Whatever you may feel or think right now, don't take your own life. Don't. And I told her, it's not your life to take. She looked at me funny. 
It's not your life. You did not design yourself. You did not create yourself. You were created for a purpose in this world. If you take yourself out, you take in away that purpose that you were set for. There's a purpose for you. And there's no reason to take your own life. There's, I don't want to get all biblical on you, but I do. Because it makes sense. There's, in the Bible it talks about where God will never give you more than you can handle. As funny as that sounds to you sometimes, you might think, hey, I'm at it. I'm at the max. This is more than I can handle. Well, God don't know when it's that point. As long as you don't take your own life, He will release some of that pain for a brief time until you strengthen. God wants you to be stronger. He wants to build you up for what? The purpose that you were set for this earth for. And that's why well, I hope somebody could hear that message right now. And I don't care about any of this stuff. I don't care if you, people subscribe to this or not. I know I say you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? That is not as important as you saving yourself. If something, or if you heard something from this video, took something at the end of this, and it really saved your life, where you decided not to take yourself and things are starting to change, you can contact me. You don't have to leave a comment below. Just send a private message or go to my to my email, shodan1197 nation at yahoo.com and let me know because I'm really interested in that. And that actually helps me when I know someone else got helped by the words that were given to me to give you. It gives me encouragement to keep doing it. That's all I have to say. Real quick, I don't, I, I mean I've had a lot of people pass away in my life and nobody has ever left and not affected somebody that was still here so you, you know, if somebody cares about you. A lot of people say nobody cares. That's just not true. Somebody does. People care, and you gotta remember that. So if you, if you go before your time, uh, you're gonna affect somebody. They're gonna be less sorrowful. So you know, there are people who care. They might not show it very well because maybe just the way they grew up, yeah, they, they have a hard time showing their emotions. But somebody does care. Someone loves you. Yeah. We care. We care. I'd like to make a lot of friends. I can't hang out with a lot of friends because that doesn't make sense. Because when will I have time to do anything else? Because if I'm too busy hosting everybody, mm -hmm. I can't do anything. But if I can influence you to do better, that's great. That's, that's really something that I feel in my heart to do. And that's one thing I want to do with these videos. I know it's martial arts, but I want to help others too. But God bless you. God bless you for watching.